Hello, welcome back to the channel. Nigel's Model Bench here with you. And here we have part four of this lovely Ryfield model King Tiger. This is the upgrade version. And the kit number, should you want to get yourself one, is 5216. I've done reviews and you've also previously seen three parts of the build. Um, so, uh, I've just this is the day after part two went out. So this is Thursday. And um, one of the comments made, which was rightfully made and I accept it, and a few people make it and I keep... I'm guilty of I just keep going back to my old ways. In part two, when I talked about tracks, um, I talked about the the way the instructions had got these parts and with the jigs and everything. If you remember, I had to cut one side off the jig and, and everything. Um, and also in the instructions here, you can see they've got these pins numbered one and two. Well, actual one and two are the actual track links. They're numbered one and two. Um, these parts are actually numbered three and four. And one would assume make an ass of you and me, that one would be three and two would be four. So one, two, three, four. But no, it's three and four. I, I did some um, referencing and there is a pin with a long head and a pin with a short head. And the short headed one is number three, which goes on the inside of the track, not left and right, inside. So you've got inside the track and outside. And here you've got inside and outside. Um, so the outside of the track has pin number four. The inside of the track has pin number three. Now, what they were saying as I go sort of, can you see that there? Pin number three is wider than pin number, or pin number four is wider than three. There you go. And that's what I'm guilty of. So now I'm going to show you properly. You can see here at the bottom of the screen is number three. Okay. And that has a shorter head than the one at the top, which is number four. Okay. So hopefully you can see that clearly. All right, it's probably not very clear because the difference is, is nominal, but it's when you see it on the track, it's quite different because on the outside of the track link, as you can see here, the pins are recessed and on this side, they're flush. So here, they're sort of sitting in and here they're sitting out. And if you have the number four, the one with the bigger head on the inside, it really is quite obvious that uh, it just doesn't look right. So anyway, there you go. So there's that. So that's that covered. And I can put those bits away now with my spare track links and everything. No doubt we're going to need some to put on the turret or something. I don't know. Right. So moving along. Um, you'll remember from part three, I'm juggling around with the process a bit. To me, it just seems a bit weird. You're going to fit all these photo etch parts and everything to the hull, which is all going to be very delicate. And then you're going to come along and fit all these ropes on, which are all going to be quite delicate, and then fit it to the upper hull, to the lower hull. I, I don't agree with doing that. What I'm doing is actually fitting it now, and then we'll put all the details on after. So, and the other thing, I haven't fitted this rear plate because I'm worried that I might get it out of line. It might not fit perfectly, and um, I haven't fitted this engine bulkhead assembly either. So that will get glued in same time as the as everything else so that's going to slot into there so that's going in there this there's a couple of tabs on there. there's a couple of tabs on there and then this rear plate will slide down in between the, the hull halves hull sides and then this upper hull is just going to drop on We've got to be careful this machine gun which we did in part three which is a bit OTT but if you have the interior kit you'll say it's lovely so you know for this kit I think they should have just given us an option of, of putting a you know having a barrel with a ball on the end and just stick it in but um they haven't done that so what we'll probably do is end up gluing that up but this cover that goes over the top is going to hold it down in fact I'm thinking what I might do I might put that ball on now because it's going to be a lot easier to hold it and clamp it in place as a separate piece than it is when it's all together. So I'm gonna, it's in the bottom of the box here somewhere. If you remember, I chucked it back in the box. Where's it gone? Boy, oh boy, am I glad I did this. Um, I was talking about painting in behind there black, but I'm not gonna worry about that for now. We'll, we'll worry about that later. Um, the only, this is quite difficult to hold in place because it doesn't have a very positive location. It just sort of sits over that ball. And I'm not going to take it off because it took quite some finagling. But what I've managed to do is get the gun in such a position 
that I've got a clamp a peg on there and I'm not touching the barrel or the gun. So it's all clamped in place. So what I'm going to do now is get some ordinary Tamiya Extra Thin and run that around there and I'm going to flood it because it's under quite a bit of pressure, quite a bit of springiness wanting to pull it back out. I'm not really worried about glue marks because this is a great big weld seam here anyway. Okay, so that's that welded in place. So I'm going to leave that now for a good few hours because if you take the peg off too soon, but you can probably see that there, how I've got that peg positioned. I've managed to get that ball clamped. And there's no way on earth we could have done that, obviously, with that hull fitted on there. So there we go. Of course, the other thing you could always do is just cut the gun off behind the ball because you don't need any of this detail in here. You're not going to see any of it. Um, and then it'll make it a lot easier to clamp. But, uh, for the making of the video to build the kit out of the box as it were I'm going to stick with it. So there we are so I'm going to put that to one side and do something else. All right and we're back so um, this is actually about three days later now. What I've been doing <clears throat> is working on these um, tools and as you can see with this being the um, upgrade upgrade version of, I keep calling it update version upgrade version it is uh, we've got these photo etch tool clamps. Life's too short, guys. Um, basically, you've got you can see you've got this piece over the top, you've got this piece on the bottom, and then you've got the operating lever, and you could actually, if you wanted to, make them work. Um, they th this was here's oh, this is basically a piece of Tamiya tape taped to a rule, and that enabled me to glue it all together um, and hold everything in place. And you can see I've got those those levers on there. They are they are beautiful, but they took hours and hours to do. So what I would recommend, um, I've done these here as well on the sledgehammer. And what I would recommend is on this side, on the right hand side here as you look at it, you have these pins. You can see there are pins that come out and they go into holes in the handle. Well, you know, you need 10 times magnification to see the bloody things and then getting them to line up and get it all to stay together is just impossible. Um, I'm sure there are people that can do it, so it's not impossible, but I, I can't do it. So what I've decided to do is glue it together like this. So I've folded up, I folded up the base part here, used the plastic parts here, which are D2 and D5 respectively, used them to get the positions of the... Um, of the clamps and bear in mind as well they tell you to drill these holes you don't need to if you're going to use the photo etch clamps so drilling those holes here was a total waste of time so they shouldn't be telling you to do that unless you're using the um unless you're using the, the uh, plastic parts but you can see on here with the plastic parts you get these ya33s which are basically these same handles but without the holes in them so my advice what i'm going to do is once these are on um, is, well, before I put them on, I'm going to sand down the sides and remove the pins. And then once these are actually fitted onto the deck, which is after it's all fitted onto the tank, I am going to um, use those with these photo etch parts. So when it comes to here, I'll do all this the same, but I won't use that clamp. OK, I'll do all this the same, glue it all on, the same as it is with these, and then I'll use these pieces here, YA, where are they? YA33, I'll use those on these parts with the, with the pins sanded off. And then they can literally just be folded and then just glued into position. Um, and basically that's what I've done here, but using the, the parts with the holes in. And you can see they look absolutely fine. They don't need to be perfect anyway. I'm sure they would have been bent in use and they wouldn't all close exactly the same and everything. So yeah, but it's, uh, that was that was the way I came up and did it was got the um, got the plastic part, let it on there, marked on on the tape where the well marked on the part where the the, uh, the photo etch part needs to be. Stick the base down onto the tape, get it all nice and square. A couple of drops of super glue, lay the tool in, let that dry, and then work on the top part, and then do the handles after. But now I'm going to do the handles after I've glued them to the hull. So they can go out of the way and not get damaged. Um, 
we've got the the back plate here as I say in the instructions they're telling you to glue these parts on now well they're just going to get damaged so you know get it all glued together first and then add, add the, the little gadgets after we've got all the wheels and tracks off they're all in the in the Galeri paint stand box so we've got all those wheels and tracks off and that will enable us to get clamps on and hold this together this has been clamped for well, like four days three days so that's that's not going anywhere so that's all good um, so none of this is actually glued in place okay so none of this is glued in um, I'm just going to place that in position make sure all the tabs are lined up yes they are and then what I'm going to do is put this upper hull on by the way even with that all clamped down you can see the machine gun is like a prick in a top hat so it's going to have to be glued anyway I won't glue it yet I'll glue it after it's painted in there inside um, or in the uh, in the opening that you can see from the front so that can go on like that. You can see those two tabs are going to line up with there. Okay, so this is all going to go down. And then we're going to make sure we've got the front lined up nicely on here. Okay, just like that. And then these sides are going to come down. as you can see it all matches up lovely and then what we'll do is this rear piece we can put this in and I'm going to glue it all in at the same time to make sure we get a lovely joint on everything ah okay that needs to go in first okay so that's going to go in first and then this can go on over the top just like so there you go Right, and now we can get a lovely fit on everything. So I think what I'll do is, I think the first thing I'm going to do is grab some extra thin. And we're going to stick that bulkhead in. Just put a drop in there and a drop in there. And that will hold that in position. That's at least one part of the puzzle that's not going to be all floating around. You notice I haven't put any glue on the bottom for fear of gluing a torsion bar to it. Okay, if you can hear noises in the background, that's Dottie with her plastic toy. It was actually the uh, my uh, the drain I used for my airbrush to hold the um, to catch the water from the water trap. It's no longer very useful for that, unfortunately, now that it's full of holes. So you can see that's going to line up with that groove under there. And the rear plate is being held in place by everything. So that's all good. In hindsight, I would have left all of this off until now because I'm likely to catch this now with a clamp or something and cause some damage. Um, I want to make sure this front part here is good. The rest can be dealt with with fillers and stuff. But I'm just going to put a drop in there. And then we'll let that just goo off as I always do. Let the cement just goo off. And then we'll get some masking tape, some of our good old Tamiya tape. Put that around the front. go there we are so that's that in place so that's the front end or the bow or whatever you call it it's looking good so I just got to go around now and put cement 
all around here, clamp everything in place, use tape, whatever, and then, uh, and then we'll be good to go. So I'll see you back in a minute. And we're back, and as you can see, clamps are off, tape's off, glue's dry, everything is actually the next day now. So, um, yeah, going really well. Um, all these panels on here are placed on. Now, if you're familiar with, like, the Tamiya King Tigers and all that, you'll know that this here is, like, one piece of plastic or even moulded into the hull. Like, I'm not sure. But basically, on this kit, this is all separate. Look. These are all separate panels. They all go in individually. They all have their own photo etched to go on them. And this panel here comes out. That panel there is separate. So you can see got all these separate parts. So what I need to do now, because all this is see-through, I'm going to get some painting done. And basically I'm going to use the Outlaw Paints Black Primer, which is great stuff. It sticks like the proverbial to a blanket. And it's not jet black. It's a very dark grey. It's really, really good. Outlawpaints.co.uk. Get this there. It's awesome stuff. Um... And what I'm going to do is paint all this area in here black and I'll paint all of the, the backs of the grills and everything so, so that th th this is the problem with this tan coloured plastic when we look down. We don't want to see this bright tan coloured plastic. We want to be able to see, you know, darkness or whatever as, as it would be in real life. So um, that's what I'm going to get done now. And it's going to be the first time I use my new gallery, um, gallery, whatever you want to call them the uh, water curtain spray booth so I'll let you know how I get on I need to make a review video of it and uh, and show you a few bits and pieces but uh, we'll leave that for a later date right so I'm gonna get some spray and done and then I'll be back all right there we go then all painted black use that Galeri paint booth for the first time and a bit of a faff with the water I must be honest but we'll have a look at that in another video but um anyway so there we go uh, we've got that done you will, if you've only just tuned in, um, and I haven't mentioned this before, this video has been filmed over quite a few days actually, so I've forgotten what I've said. But basically, I am completely messing up the build sequence because what they would have you do here is add all these details and all these little flimsy little photo etch parts and everything, and then bring it all together. Well, I'd rather build the main sub, you know, the, the, the main hull of the model and then add details to it. So that's what I'm going to do. So here, um, we have this, this forward plate going on and they're telling us to add that before you put the hull together. I would seriously recommend not doing that because what will happen then is you won't be able to get in here with your cements and glue it up and everything. And also, um, if you get it out of square or whatever, you are knickered. So that's what I'm going to do. Now I'm just looking here. We've got, where they assemble this plate, they've got this piece here going in. So I'm going to get this, this piece here, A14, and just check... A9 or A10, I don't know what the difference is. I'm just going to check that I can actually drop that in afterwards, or maybe I do have to actually put it on now. We shall see. Right, back in a second. So that part can be dropped in afterwards. I've um, I've added that little uh, protective cover that goes out over the um, the site. So there we are. Right. Um, so basically, I'm going to glue this main plate into the hull now. So you can see we've got this recessed area with the weld detail, which is very nice, beautifully done. So what I'm going to be doing with this model is fitting all of this, the stuff that's welded. So basically this panel now, and then I'm going to be going around Mr. Surfacer. Um, I may put the others on as well, but I won't put Mr. Surfacer on them because they're welded joints. Um, they're, sorry, they're not welded joints. I mean, not they are welded joints, they're not welded joints. I'm just going to put some cement in there. I've got the shakes today for some unknown reason. Um, I'm not getting a lot of sleep, to be honest, because of a certain uh, four-legged individual. But um, that's getting better. Things are improving in that respect. Okay, so just a few large drops of cement in here. And then what I'll do is I will go around afterwards with Mr. Surfacer, probably 500, and run that in, and then remove the excess of the cotton bud, and that'll give us a nice seamless... Well, not, I'm not looking for a seamless joint. I want to be able to see the weld seam. What I'm looking for is a, a gapless joint, if you like. I'm going to brush some along here, actually, I think. That's going to help to um, 
seal it in. If I leave gaps there, what we might find is the Mr. Surfacer would just go into the gap and not stay in there. That's that in there. There we go. That's all good. So that's that panel fitted. Now we've got this panel here which is going to drop in there and that's going to go that way around. And again they're asking us to put all the details and everything on that first. I'll leave that off for now. Okay. And then what I think I'll do next is wait for this to dry and then we'll do our Mr. Service up here, down here, along here, along here, along here, everywhere where there's a welded joint. Um, and then we'll have a nice seamless looking model. You can see here we've got a bit of a gap going down the side there. And like I say, in hindsight, I would have left all this delicate photo etch off until after I've done this. Um, I may be able to get some more cement in there now just to try and unify it a bit better. And uh, you may be thinking, I'll oh, use sprue goo, but no, don't use sprue goo on stuff like this because you can't remove it after. The beauty of using the Mr. Surfacer is we can come in with a cotton bud and remove the excess and not remove any detail. So that's what we're going to do. Right. So um, remember, guys, this is being built because of Dottie um, and I don't want to be doing any of my sort of super detailed projects and everything because I have to sort of put it down every 10 minutes and go and get something off her. <laughs> but she is, um, she's making massive improvements. She's only been here, what, two weeks tomorrow. So um, yeah, she's brilliant. Right, let that dry. Mr. Servicer, see you in a minute. Okay, so here we are, <clears throat> a couple of days later, frog in the throat as soon as I put the camera on. Bloody typical. Um, yeah, a couple of days later, you don't need to leave this a couple of days. You can just leave this for an hour and do this. You can leave it for half an hour if you want to, but the trouble is it will just all come off. So that's um, Mr. Surfacer 1000. And I've got here Mr. Colour Leveling Thinners. I'm going to put the lid back on because it smells. And if you knock it over, it will go everywhere. So um, Cotton Bud is soaked in Mr. Colour Leveling Thinners. Don't use the um, cellulose thinners. Don't use... The uh, rapid thinners don't use the tool cleaner, only Mr. Cut 11 thinners. The rest of them will attack the plastic, whereas the, um, the leveling thinner won't. Now, you can see I've left this, as I say, for a couple of days, so it's gone off quite hard and it makes it a lot harder to remove, which is in some instances better. Um, if you if you do it too quickly, you can remove it all and you won't leave anything that left in there at all, you'll pull it all out of the seam. If you leave it too long, it becomes very, very difficult. If you don't have leveling thinners, um, I would suggest leaving it for about an hour, hour and a half, and then use IPA um, to, to remove the uh, to remove the excess. But um, you know, don't. I, I've seen people use cellulose thinners and stuff, and that is really dodgy because it will attack the plastic, especially your your softer plastics out there. And um, it does seem lately, uh, w w whether it's just my imagination or what, I do not know, but it just seems lately there are many different sort of plastics out there being used because I'm having real trouble with some, with certain glues, so um, or certain cements, should I say. So, uh, yeah, but there we go. So just literally using the cotton bud, you can get in there and remove as, li as much or as little as you want, and that will leave you a lovely seam-free joint without removing any detail. Now on these corners here, underneath here, obviously that is like a, um, it's welded brown back or whatever, but it's a sharp edge. So there I've sanded it, but in here, and like in these corners back here, I will use the cotton bud to remove the excess and leave a seamless joint behind without having to do any sanding, remove any detail or anything. Okay, so that's all we're going to do now. It's just go around the whole thing like that. So I'll get it done and then I'll come back and we must be getting pretty near to calling it a day for this video. We shall see. Okay, that's all done. Um, we had a couple of areas where uh, we ended up going through. So that's where it hasn't penetrated into the gap. Down here, which it bloody would be, wouldn't it? Right where the most awkward place is to remove it. 
and um, <clears throat> and on there. So we'll let that dry for a couple of hours, then we'll get in there with the cotton bud and remove that. So what I'm looking at now is these photo etch grills and applying these. So these are the, these little side pieces. They're a lovely fit. Um, basically, there's there's four little dimples in the back of the photo etch part, and then there's four little nipples on the part itself on the plastic part so that is just going to sit on there and locate beautifully on those little dimples and once it's in place it's 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 lovely it really is lovely so what i'm going to do is put a tiny drop of super glue on each of these four little pins now I'm using the, the black thin from VMS, which is uh, which is my favourite super glue on the planet. Make sure you've got this the right way up. So dimple side down, and then just place that on, push it down, and there we go. And what I might do is give these a coat of black before I put them on, because it's going to be much easier to get in. From all the angles, you can get in from behind as well because what you don't want to do is end up with this shiny brass showing anywhere. And what I might do is do these with like a red oxide colour. So here we go, so we've got that to do four times. And then we've got these here. Uh, these are C37, these are the round fan covers. Um, and we've got this photo etch on here. Make sure you get the photo etch the right way up when you do it. You can see one side is, is quite plain. And the other side has the has the sort of interwoven mesh texture on it. So with this, I want to make sure I've got them all the same, both the same. So you can see here we have a flat and perpendicular to that. There's a line there. So what I'm going to do is line. There's no location for these, unfortunately. So what I'm going to do is look through and line the mesh up with that line that molded rib and then holding that in position I'm going to go around and make sure it's even because it's as I say there's no location and it's going to be quite easy to get it off center in fact I'm going to do this under a magnifier because it'd be a lot easier for me to see to get it central and then I'll just go in and tap the sides so I'll get that done and then I'll be back okay they're all glued on so um what I've done with these, I've gone that cotton bud that I used with the uh, with the leveling thinner on, gone round and just removed the excess glue. While the glue is still soft, um, Mr. Car Leveling Thinners will remove the VMS. You don't need to get in there with the super glue remover. Once it's hard, you need to use super glue remover. But um, the VMS, when it's soft, you can remove it. And of course, the beauty of the black stuff is you can see what you've got on there. Now, a little tip for newer modelers. Um, Something I do, get a, a round blade like so. I'm going to dip that in some of the black glue, and then I've got some of the VMS XT thin. And all I'm doing is using the black as a color guide, and I can see them where the glue is. And what I can do is just run around here with this blade and put the glue into that gap. Okay, so. Just run around there and a blade is, I remember a, a gentleman at my first ever Telford, he was actually, I can't remember his name, he was a gentleman of colour, a very good model, I think he was from Bristol, and he told me, he told me how to do this. He's a, he's a very well known model around Bristol I believe. I'm sorry, sir, I've forgotten your name. I've just pulled that off again because I glued it to my finger, which was rather silly. There we go. We can just mop up the excess and that will now be glued down nice and solid. OK, I'll do the same on the others. I'm going to also go around the edges of these just to make sure they don't go pinging off or anything. So um, there we go. And I'm going to call that a day for this video, I think, because um, I have a lot of other stuff to get on with. Uh, so I'm going to call it a day for this video. I'm going to go around with these super glue and I'm probably going to paint the back of them or whatever and then um, and go from there. So I will see you all very soon. Thank you for watching and uh, stay tuned for part five, which will be coming very, very shortly. Bye for now.